Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Marston, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to be building an expression rig that creates a wavy, ribbon-like, snaky path whose points follow each other on a delay. First, we'll set up our expression rig, then we'll learn about the Create Path expression, which we will finally use to create our custom snaking path. All right, here we are in After Effects, and this is one more example of how you might use this snaking path in an animation. And I should point out that we are only gonna be learning how to make this path whose points follow each other on a frame delay using expressions. We are not gonna be going over all this other, um, all these other stylized elements in this animation. But if you want, you can download this project file for free via the link in the description, and then dig into all these hidden layers and see exactly how this final effect was. Uh, was built. And I also want to point out that for those of you who absolutely don't care how this uh, snake path is made, you just want to have a path whose points follow each other, I have made this into a preset called Snake Path, uh, which would also be a great name for a Metal Gear Solid game, I think. Um, and if you double click that preset, then it has all this functionality built in, and you can even um, you can even go into these controls, which are a little more robust than what we're going to cover in this tutorial, and, and tweak the look of it. Um, you can, of course, actually it'd be helpful. Let me just show the path uh, that we've created. You can see all the points on the path, and you can change the number of points. And by changing the number of points, you're also changing the look of the curve that you're getting. So anyway, all of that, uh, you can download this preset via the link in the description. It'll take you to this page, Snake Path AE preset, and then you can download it here for a fair price, which we all know is probably zero, but uh, if you want to pay more, that's fine too. Um, all right, so back into the tutorial, let's set up our expression rig. So as with any expression rig, there is some setup involved up front. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank shape layer. And I'm going to rename that to Snake Path. And we'll notice because it is a fresh shape layer, there is nothing in the contents. What we need is a path with the path property and a stroke. So you could go add path, add stroke. But what I find is more efficient is with the layer selected, hitting G on the keyboard to bring up the pen tool, then making a single point anywhere in the composition. And what that does is under the path, under the contents of the shape layer, now we have a shape group with a path that has a path property, has a stroke and fill already loaded, and this also has its own transform properties, which is handy. Um, so it's just a little more efficient. I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate the fill and turn on the stroke. This is just preparation for what we're going to make. I'm gonna add a few slider controls, control D to duplicate. And in fact, I think I need five of them. So the first one I'm gonna call leader, which is going to control the value of the leading point that the rest of the points will follow. And then we're gonna have frame delay, which I'm gonna to set to one, which is how many frames the points will follow each other's values. And then total width, which we will set to 1500, and that'll be the width of the path. And then number of points, which is literally how many points will make up this path. I'm gonna set that to 30. And then lastly, I'm gonna say, roundness. I'm going to set that to 50. Okay, so these will come in handy as we build this rig out. All right, so now the fun begins. We are going to make a path using only expressions. So to do that, we need to find the path property. And one way to do that is to click these arrows to toggle into contents, into our group, our shape group layer, into path, and now we have our path property. But uh, a faster way I want to show you real quick, oops, is just select the layer, hit Control or Command F to activate the search bar of the timeline panel, type in the name of the property you are looking for, in this case, path, and then After Effects will automatically display um, that property for the selected layers. So that's just a little faster way, in my opinion. So we wanna add an expression. So we're gonna Alt click on the stopwatch of the path property, and then under the language expression menu arrow, which is this right here, we're gonna go under the path property group of expressions, and at the very bottom, we find this create path expression, right? So when we click it and click away, lo and behold, the create path expression 
creates a path. Um, so it looks a little intimidating at first, but I'm going to walk you through it. There are four arguments that it needs. There's points, intangents, outtangents, and is closed. And you actually don't even need this points equals um, or the intangents equals, so we can just delete those. But the, the first argument contains a list of coordinates of all the points in the path. So it's, it's an array of arrays. This first array in this array of arrays is 0, 0. So the x position of the first point is 0, and the y position of the first point is 0. And the reason why that this isn't in the upper left corner of our composition is because this is relative to the position of our layer. So our layer is at 960 by 540, or dead center in the composition. So when our point is at 0, 0, um, then it is actually at 960 by 540. Uh, anyway, so making our way around, we can see that x moves over 100, then y is at 0, then they continue and they make a square. And to simplify things a little bit, because this is just a little hard to look at, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut those values. And above this, I'm going to make a new variable called points and paste that array of arrays. And then I'm going to put that variable back in its place. We can see that nothing has changed. It's just a little easier to now deal with this create paths expression. So next we have the intangents and outtangents, um, which we aren't actually going to use those in this um, tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the uh, labels and just leave these empty arrays because that's fine for our purposes. But if you're curious, um, tangents are just these handles here that control the slope of the curve of a path. If you took calculus, you're probably very familiar with tangents. Um, and so in this case, we don't care about the tangents, so we're just going to leave these arrays as blank. And then last, is closed equals true. And if I uh, we, as with the other arguments, we can delete the is closed equals and just be left with the true. If I change this to false, I think you'll see quickly what happens. Basically, is closed if it's true, then the first point and the last point of the path connect. And if it's false, then they don't connect and it's an open path. All right, so we're off to a good start. We're creating a path with an expression, but we do have a good way to go before we've created the final result we're after, which is a path whose points uh, follow each other on a frame delay. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to add a little bit more code, uh, or actually a lot more code. So buckle up, be prepared to pause the video. Uh, it's going to get a little bit confusing, and I'll do my best to explain as we go what's going on. But uh, if you need to, feel free to ask questions in the comments as well. Okay, so in this, in this path property expression, I'm going to add a few more variables which match the sliders we created earlier. The first one I'm going to call leader. Pick whip to the leader slider. And this is going to control the value of the first point that all the others will follow. Um, the next is going to be frame delay equals pick whip to frame delay. This is the number of frames we want the delay to be. And then total w equals, so this is going to be the total width of our path, and then num points, which is the number of points that will be in the path, semicolon. And I'm actually not going to link to the roundness um, slider. We're going to use that later. So num points. So now I need one more, and that is gap dis, or gap distance. And that is a calculation of total width divided by the number of points, num points variable. And what that is, that will give us a number that is the that is the number of pixels between points, which we will use when calculating the x value um, of each point. Okay, so with that, I think we need one more variable actually, and that is to convert our number of frames for the delay to seconds. So D for delay. I mean, it can be these variables can be anything you want, but I just say D for delay. We're going to say this comp dot frame duration, which is a the number of seconds or the decimal of seconds that each frame in this composition will take. We multiply that times our frame delay variable. So now this converts our interval value, in this case one, the number of frames 
to seconds so that After Effects can understand how long that, de that delay should happen. And instead of using these default point values, which are in this array of arrays and create this box, we're just going to say new array with a capital A, open close parentheses, and this will create a new empty array into which we're going to feed our point values. And we're going to generate those values using a for loop. So this for loop, we want to run the same number of points, the same number of times as the number of points on the path, which is described in our number of points slider. So that looks like this, say four open parentheses, i equals zero. So we're gonna start at zero, semicolon, then i is less than or equal to num points variable. Uh, so this is our condition for continuation. And it is if i is less than or equal to are essentially our number of points slider, then what happens? We say i plus plus. Basically add one to i and rerun the loop. And perfect, so now open curly brackets and hit enter. So now we need to define the x and y values that we wanna to push to our path. So we start with x, x equals i times gap dis, which is our gap distance, the distance between points semicolon, and then y equals leader. And now we need to say, so this leader is the basically the value that we're offsetting the first point. Um, and to add a delay, we need to say leader, add a delay to each consecutive point. We're gonna say leader dot value at time. And then in these parentheses, we say time minus, open parentheses, i times, D. So basically, I is the number, the point number that we're creating, and we're going to multiply that times the number of seconds uh, that our delay should be. And that will create that consecutive delay effect. Semicolon. And now the last thing to put it all together, we just need to push these two, these two data points as an array into our array that is our points variable. So we say points.push. And in these parentheses, then we put open square brackets, x comma y. So now we are taking the x and y values, making them into an array, and pushing that array into the blank array that is our points, our points variable. And that points variable is being fed into our create paths expression at the end, so that when I hit semicolon and enter, we have our path. I'm sorry that was so complicated and confusing. I probably could have found a better way to explain it, um, but I hope it made some sense. So now if we click on the path, you can see that all these points have been created. And if I go ahead and hit E to bring up our effects under the leader slider, the leader is currently zero, but I'm gonna hit a keyframe. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe and then hit shift page down to jump 10 frames into the future. I'm gonna go ahead and make another value, add another value here, say I don't know, 400. And you can see what's happening is that the first point, which has no delay because it is basically point zero, um, the first point is going to go down 400 pixels and the rest of the key, uh, the rest of the points are following suit at, this, at the delay that we have selected. So if we increase this to two second, to a two frame delay, excuse me, it changes the shape of the curve of this path. And if we play with the, um, the easing here, so if I hit F9 to easy ease these, and if we look, I'll hit Shift F3 to access the graph editor, um, the easing will also impact visually how this path looks. So one thing you might have noticed is that this curve that's being created is not a true curve. It's kind of jagged, and that's because it's really just a bunch of straight lines that are connecting points, and they're close enough together that when you zoom out, it looks like a curve. Um, but if you want it to truly be a curve, um, a couple solutions would be to crank up the number of points until they are there's so many that it basically, for all intents and purposes, is a curve. But the problem with this is that the more points you have, the harder it is on your processor. So the other solution, which is a little more resource friendly, would be in your, uh, let me find the path, under your shape group, which in this case is called shape one, we can add this 
operator called round corners. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see what's happening. Um, set this to zero. We can see that this is sort of jagged. And as we crank this up, it rounds out the appearance of the path. And that's the solution that I use. And then I just pick, with, pick whip this to the roundness slider so it's easier to control. And then there you go. And with that, we are essentially finished. All you have to do is keyframe the value of the leader slider. Let me just go into the graph editor here. And then that will control your snake path. And I'm going to throw it out there one more time that the snake path preset uh, that you can download via the link in the description uh, does all of this automatically and more. Um, you can go from left to right. You can go from center. You can add a fill or the fill actually comes pre-added. You can change the opacity of the fill and the color. Uh, quite a bit of stuff that you can do and it even has a trim paths pre keyframe so all you have to do is hit U and then you can access the trim start and trim end. Um, so for an effect, for example, like this, it's kind of a bad example. Let's go from right to left. There, that's still a bad example, but you get the idea. All right, so that's the whole tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment if you have a question and be sure to hit the like button so YouTube knows to promote this video all across the whole internet. All right, thanks guys, have a good day.